What's up? This is Maddie Mullins from Memphis Mayfire, and you're watching UIW TV. here backstage with Maddie Mullins from Memphis Mayfire. Now tell us, what is the history of Memphis Mayfire? Uh, kind of a long one. We've been a band for a little over four years. Um, the band started with a different singer but only went for like less than a year. Uh, did like an EP and then uh, started doing a full length and uh, midway through the full length the singer had to go home and uh, leave the band. Uh, for personal reasons and so they went through a bunch of auditions um, I think it was like 180 auditions or something and just didn't find the guy they wanted uh, eventually heard about me through a group of people and contacted me and uh, I just recorded some stuff with them it was just like it worked right off the bat and uh, I've been in the band ever since just done a lot of touring worldwide Europe Japan states um, put out another EP, another full length, and doing another full length in March. Everything's good in the Memphis Mayfire world, you know? Back, you're all back in the States, coming off of a European tour. Yep. How, how was that? How was the crowd? What's the, what's the crowd difference from over there to over here? You know, like, I would say it was better almost, you know, just because we've, uh, We've never been to Europe before, but we've had fans over there for about four years. So it's like, you know, when we got over there, there's fans that had waited so long to see us that were so excited about seeing us that uh, the shows were huge. Uh, you know, like most nights sold out, which was awesome. Um, and it was our headliner. It's called the Rise Records European Tour. We took uh, the Color Morale and Dream On Dreamer over there with us, which was awesome. We love those dudes. Um, but yeah, the shows were incredible. Uh, but now, you know, like when we get back and we're doing this tour and every night selling out, you know, I can't really say wh which one's better. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like the whole world loves Memphis Mayfire. Life is good, dude. It's good. Y'all's new album, The Hollow, y'all are just progressing. Memphis Mayfire 2.0. Yeah, I mean, it, it is different. Um, but I think difference comes with progression. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, like if it wasn't different, then it wouldn't be progression. And uh, yeah, I mean, like there's a lot of kids that are just like, there's no more southernness to it or whatever, but that's not true. You know, I mean, there is a very southern aspect to it, uh, but we tune a lot lower now, so it's harder to pick out, you know? And uh, Kellen doesn't really write in a blues scale anymore, um, but that's just because, you know, we, we kind of found our niche with The Hollow. You know, The Hollow is the, is the album that we really discovered exactly who Memphis Mayfire is. You know, and everything before it, just like any other band, we were experimenting and trying to find out who we were as a band and who we were as people with writing and things like that. So, no, I mean, like, uh, it's different, absolutely, but it is progression. Um, it's, I, I, you guys, you know, you could say it is Memphis Mayfire 2.0 in a way, you know, but um, every album we do is going to sound different, uh, you know, like, not dramatically, but just... We want, we want to always progress, we want to be getting better because if we're not then there's no reason for us to write music anymore. We don't want to put the same album out over and over again. So you know, you can expect the next record to be different from The Hollow and uh, hopefully look forward to that and enjoy it rather than just you know nitpicking or whatever from behind a computer. But it's like, no, um, people love the progression from Sleepwalking to The Hollow and I think they're going to love the progression with the next record. Yeah, you've had a lot of great feedback off of that. Yeah, off of that. it's been great. Really great. Um, on the track, on the track listing, there has to be a story, or just a platform of how the track listings are, because they're just the the center, right. the unforgiven. Right. Um, in a way, it is a concept album, um, but it's not so much of a concept album as as bands that you know, like it's all just like one story. It's really not all one story by any means. Um, it's a concept album in that every song is told from the perspective of somebody different on an issue that they went through or dealt with and it's all from the perspective of other people that I know personally. Um, so, you know, like The Abandon is about a good friend of mine that grew up without a father and his experiences as a child, you know? And, uh, you know, like The Deceived is about a relationship gone bad with a, you know, very close friend of mine that I watched that, you know, I watched it happen and I saw what it did to them. And um, 
I've always written about myself and written about you know my own point of views and you know like my thoughts on the current state of mankind and with the hollow I wanted that to be different you know like I wanted to write a record for the kids for the fans um, on issues that even if I haven't gone through you know issues that I know some of them have dealt with and I want them to be able to relate to our songs and to you know use our songs in that album as an emotional outlet you know just to release whatever they need to and so that's definitely what the hollow was and you know like the response was incredible and I definitely think that we're gonna incorporate some of that in the new record as well so that's good what is your favorite one to play not your favorite track but your favorite one to play live yeah I don't know it's hard um, it's hard to say that I've said this in interviews before but there's like nothing that we would change about the hollow we're so happy with it how it came out that it's like we really enjoy playing every song off of it live um, but I mean, I guess like crowd response wise and like sing along wise, uh, the victim and the center are both songs that you know kids like really latched onto, and we have like amazing time playing it live. So yeah. What is in store for Memphis Mayfire in 2012? A lot, actually. We're booked up all the way until the end of 2012. But there's only so much I can talk about. Um, I can tell you right after this, we're going on tour with Norma Jean. Uh, it's kind of a short run. Uh, we're doing half of it, and then there's another band that's doing half of it. It's the the three of five slot, you know, right below O Sleeper and Norma Jean. Um, so it's going to be a really rad short tour. Uh, after that, we have a little time off, maybe like a week or two, you know, nothing nothing too crazy. And then we go back out with uh, Icy Stars, and so it's like Icy Stars and us and Stick to Your Guns. Uh, so that'll be a really rad tour. And then we have time off, uh, like a little bit of time off again, and then we do something that I can't tell you about. But it's awesome, like the rest of the year is planned out, um, you know, United States and overseas. It's all booked up, we're going to be everywhere to see everybody, so it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a big year, it's yeah. going to be a big year for Memphis yeah, Mayfire. Absolutely. What was y'all looking forward to most from the album coming out? The reaction from the fans? What was y'all's mindset about that? Well, like, I think with every release, um, if you know that it's your best work, if, if you know that it's your best effort, then you're just really excited to put it out, you know? And I mean, there's always gonna be, you know, fans that latch on to everything we do, and there's always gonna be haters and everything, but they all play a part in the big world of, you know, like what we call the music industry. You know, like you have to have the haters, you know, because they help promote just as much as the fans do, and, you know, yeah. realistically. Um, but I mean, like, I guess what we were most excited about was just sharing what we worked so hard on with everybody you know there wasn't like one specific song or or like one part of the record where we were like oh that's sick that we wanted everybody to hear you know we just wanted them to hear what we call the hollow you know like the hollow was i think a work of art from you know from us and 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 we all really played a big part in in the writing process and so we just wanted kids to hear it and uh not only was the reaction as good as we thought but like even better and you know our fan base has tripled and quadrupled since we put the record out so you know we're really happy with the release and uh, we've already started writing for the next record and i can tell it's going to be the same thing again you know kids are going to love it fan base is going to continue to grow so like we're really happy